going to look at a circuit that has actually a number of series and parallel combinations, but now it's actually going to have inductors and resistors in, these, in this interesting com combination. It'll also have an input voltage source, which could be a very much a time-varying signal. We could look at that. And it'll have the output here at V2. Okay, and so we're going to be imagining that's the voltage I'm looking for. I'm also going to care about this intermediate voltage, which is that this node here, right where the inductors are, which is going to be, which we're going to just label as V3, is this voltage from here down to this common terminal. Okay, so now you look at this and you think, well, how can I approach this? And one of the things where this simplifies very quickly is that I've got this inductor L2 and L3 are in parallel. Same terminals on both sides. So those are parallel combination, and that's in series with L1. Well, I could imagine that would then give me this inductance that is an equivalent of L1 plus the parallel combination of L2 and L3. I could also imagine that if I mostly care about V3, I could just look at the combination of R1 and R2 in series, and I get that particular summation. The two of them are in series, so that's where I get, and so I get V3. Now you might be going, well, wait, I don't have V2. I might have lost it. And the answer is, well, we sort of did and we sort of didn't. Uh, in the sense of the way I've simplified this, I have lost v V2, although if I knew V3, I could get to V2. Now, how is that? Well, schematically, I know that from V3 to V2, this is a resistive voltage divider. And so we know what that expression would look like in the sense that this would be R3 over the sum of R1 plus R2. Okay, so now it looks like we've got two very reasonable pieces to work with here. Right, and so if I'm looking at V2 as a function of V3, I would get this kind of divider relationship. Okay, so, so far so good. So then the question becomes, well, how do I approach this? Well, this actually I've got an inductor and a resistor. So now how do I approach this is that I'm going to realize by Kirchhoff's voltage law, I'm going to have this voltage V1 is going to be equal to the sum of the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the resistor. Well, the voltage across the resistor is just V3, so we'll just work with that. The voltage across the inductor is related to the inductance times the derivative of the current in this loop with time. And so I get this kind of an expression, V1, and the first term, and then second term. I think this is great, but all, now I need to figure out how do I deal with this current. Well, I also know that the current in this loop and the V3 are related by the voltage R1 plus R2. Simply Ohm's law in a very simple way. Okay, this now gives us a way to be able to take this and substitute it in for I by taking a derivative, and I end up getting this expression. This might look a little complicated until you realize that everything in here is simply a time constant. Now, if you remember this in terms of like if you had a capacitor and resistor circuit, that time constant would of course you know be probably straightforward to many people, but with inductors may or may not be as familiar. But time constant here will typically be inductance over resistance. And so by making this sort of um, definition, what I'm going to get then is this very, very important differential equation, which is a first order differential equation. It is basically a low pass filter. It is a differential equation that if you had a step response, you're going to see an exponential decay towards, an, towards a solution related to this tau or that time constant. Okay, so far so good. And so then you could take that, and if I needed to find V2, again, I have the voltage divider and I get the resulting solution below. Great. So now what would happen if I had put some specific numbers? So I put these numbers in for these three L's. I have two R values. Okay, well, the two R values, R1 and R2, means that this divider becomes basically one-fourth. That simplifies things pretty quickly, so this just becomes one-fourth here. What is the time constant? Well, I've got sort of an effective inductance of 10 millihenries, because the parallel combination of two tens plus a five gives me a 10. Kind of a funny set of numbers how that math works out, but that is what happens. R1 plus R2 is then 20 kilo ohms. A result from L over R gives me basically a time constant of half a microsecond. And so I've got tau is half a microsecond, and then this is the rest of my differential equation. And then we could go on to solving that for different types of inputs in V1 to get the resulting value for V2, and of course V3 should we be curious in those particular values.